Good afternoon, everybody. Climate change is perhaps the greatest and hardest challenge of our time. Now, we are very lucky to live here in this vibrant metropolitan area, but I want us to take a minute and ask, what are we doing to the environment? Now, just to give you an example, this season, this summer season, our, our region has experienced 80 consecutive days of unhealthy ozone levels. This is happening partly because temperatures are rising and heat waves. And in fact, if we don't do anything about climate change, the damages in our region would get even stronger and it would take the form of droughts, wildfires, and further deterioration of air quality. So what we want to do today is to have a conversation with you about how us, at, as, as, as University of Southern California, can come together and develop sustainability solutions so that we have a better future here in our region and around the world. Now, we are here also to celebrate our new president, a champion for sustainability, and to mark that, we are announcing the launching of the USC Center for Sustainability Solutions. We are obviously very excited about the center, and the center is going to start by working on four main areas with the ultimate goal of advancing the Sustainable Development Goals, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Now, it is important to note that climate change cuts across all these thematic areas, from sustainable transportation to sustainable cities. And this is precisely why Mate and I believe it's time for us to break our traditional university silos and come together. These challenges are so hard for a single discipline, a school or a college to tackle them. So our mission is really to come together and develop the future sustainability solutions that assure that future generations would have the same quality of life or better than what we have today. To continue our conversation, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about the technologies that are available. Think of them as potential solutions to some of these crises. And then in the second part of the talk, I would return to talk about public policy solutions that may allow us to fasten the adoption of those technologies into the economy. These are indeed tough problems, but we can provide solutions. Our unique value proposition in the USC Center for Sustainability Solutions is indeed to provide technological solutions in lockstep with those of public policy. So from a global perspective, we take remote sensing technologies, for example, to, to develop a dynamic knowledge base of our planet and how things are changing. We work with federal agencies, international agencies, industry, and various academic institutions to uh, launch satellites. Uh, we work with them to come up with uh, quantities such as sea surface salinity or soil moisture. These are not just academic exercises. These are actual key pieces of information that go into global climate models. So we use our technologies to understand, to predict, and ultimately to adapt to global climate change uh, issues. So for example, we use our perspective from air or space, our microwave remote sensing technologies, to look at how the vulnerable Arctic regions are changing. We look at permafrost and how it's changing due to the warming trends. This is important because it allows the local stakeholders to use this information and to come up with adaptation strategies for these very vulnerable local communities. Their houses are sinking, uh, the infrastructure is suffering, so they, they need information in order to, to adapt. We can also come up with information about land cover, land use change, or urban infrastructure, or uh, about air quality. Now, we don't just take the top-down approach from space to ground, but we also take the bottom-up approach. We roll our sleeves up, we go in the field, we deploy uh, sensors. We are at the cutting edge of uh, wireless sensor network technologies here at USC. We deploy them on the ground, we, we can deploy them, we're look, working on deploying them from networks of UAVs, and we use all these kinds of different data to inform local solutions, which we hope to scale up to uh, global. 
For example, let's take an example of the smart building of the future. We take information from satellite remote sensing to know what's going on outside of the building. We take information from sensor networks from inside the building to see who's in there, how they're moving, what time of day it is. And together, this smart building comes up with a solution for how it's going to control its climate on an uh, hour-to-hour -hour basis, on a daily basis, or on a seasonal basis. And uh, also another example is the case of informing uh, the behavior of a smart grid. So imagine in your neighborhood, you get information from satellite remote sensing in terms of what's happening uh, in the air, in the climate, and also you have sensor networks from inside the grid. And together in a scheme uh, based on a demand response, we optimize how the grid is uh, learning and uh, modifying its behavior. Yet another example is a smart paint. Imagine if your house or your car or the urban infrastructure had a smart paint on it, which could regulate the temperature based on the information it gets from the outside or from the inside, and it minimizes the wasteful uh, exchange of heat uh, between the inside and outside by keeping, uh, keeping that temperature at the surface at, at a constant level. And then we can talk about sustainable manufacturing, carbon capture and storage, autonomous vehicles, ultra-efficient electronics, sustainable water services, and a slew of other technologies that are currently being developed here, right here at USC. Bottom line is that we are prepared. We are already working in, on these technologies. There's so much more under development. And all we need is a push to take our technologies into the next level and making them talk to the public policy solutions. That's right, Martin. Uh, now, all these technologies, uh, the idea here is to bring them to the marketplace because we ultimately have this global challenge of climate change to solve. And so I want to spend just a little bit of time to talk about the route of the climate change problem. And I think for us to understand that, I'm going to rely on an example that hopefully is very familiar to all of us. Every morning, when we make our driving decisions, effectively, we are not accounting for the impacts that the emissions we generate cause in our communities. It's actually that simple. In other words, we pay for the private cost of driving, but we are actually not paying for the emissions we create. If instead we were able to put a price on carbon, presumably we would be sending to the agents in the economy a variety of incentives for them to adjust. For example, faced with a higher fuel price, drivers would start looking for more fuel-efficient vehicles, potentially they would drive less, and eventually they would transition towards public transit. So, in a nutshell, the source and the root of the climate change crisis is that, for the most part, the prices of the transactions in the economy are fundamentally wrong. The way to fix that is by design smart public policy that gets the prices right. Let me repeat, what we need is to design smart public policy so that most of the damage that we are causing in the environment is priced the same way that the goods and services you, we consume. So now, at the Price School, my colleagues from public policy, public administration, urban planning, have worked in many aspects of this issue and in fact have provided tremendous advances to knowledge over time. In addition, the Schwarzenegger Institute for State and and global policy has certainly been a key player for convening and advancing discussions that, that move us forward when we are in times of political gridlock. But in practice, what we are witnessing, and we are witnessing this week with the United Nations Climate Summit, is that we are not moving fast enough at the global level. So I am convinced that the solution to the climate crisis actually has to start at a national or a subnational level. We need to find a champion that will take the first move. So the question then is, under what conditions is it in the best interest of a country or a region to act, 
on climate alone. Let's take the case of China. Well, faced with a major pollution crisis that has actually translated in premature deaths, it would actually be in the best interest of China, irrespectful of what the rest of the world is doing, to put a price on carbon of about $60 per ton. The results would be amazing. Not only you would see a major reduction in coal, but from a perspective of well-being and public health, the result would be an increase in life expectancy of three years. Of course, the concern is that if China were to do this alone, would China be undermining its presence in the marketplace? And for the most part, what recent public, public policy research suggests is that if a country moves forward with carbon pricing, that country could also introduce a border carbon adjustment so that countries that have carbon pricing and countries that don't have carbon pricing are leveled out. So this is how we think we start creating sustainability solutions. All we need is a big country or a big region to be the first mover. That mover, by the way, is going to create a new paradigm for sustainable development that not only will be protecting the environment, but it will be foster green economic growth and potentially even promote social justice. Now, this picture starts with the US, and while perhaps the US government at this point is not ready to take leadership on climate, to put it mildly, California and Southern California in particular are ready. And in fact, what we are seeing from our local officials is a tremendous ambition. As an economist and as a, as, a, as a public policy scholar, I believe the future of the green economy starts here in Los Angeles. And the Los Angeles New Green Deal, our county sustainability plan, and the, and the Olympics coming provide a platform for aspiration for our community and our state. What the Center for Sustainability Solutions responsibility is, is to deliver the public policy and technology solutions that will actually make these plans move from aspiration to reality. That is our mission. Now, of course, our mission as educators also start by preparing the next generation of individuals that are entering the workforce. And so to this end, Los Angeles is also the best place to start these activities because by bringing our students to our regulatory agencies, to the Los Angeles Clean Incubator, and to many others throughout the region, we will develop the most creative sustainability grant challenges scholars program that I think we've ever seen. Now, creating sustainability solutions doesn't start at age 18. It actually starts as a child. So it is our obligation also to figure out ways to better educate the educators so that the children get used to the idea that these are the challenges of their lives. And if they don't take anything about it, that there would be uh, probably not such a bright future down the road. And we are using, in partnership with the School of Education, the Olympics, as an opportunity to develop an education program around the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, our university is global, and so are the sustainability challenges that we are trying to solve. Therefore, our center not only starts here in LA, but with Matze and I and all the others affiliated with the center have worked incredibly hard to start creating hubs around the world so that much of the knowledge that starts here can be quickly transferred in other big metropolitan areas that are witnessing more or less the same problems, but also in many cases, challenges that are for which the solutions have already been found elsewhere could be transferred here. So we leave you with some concluding remarks, Mata. So this is a call to action. We are here at USC in, in the, one, of, one of the hub, our major hub for sustainability solutions. We have what it takes to get it done. We have world-class faculty and staff, top students, cutting-edge facilities, resources, 
18 professional schools, and of course the city of Los Angeles, which provides the perfect uh, testbed for, uh, for our approach. Already we have several schools involved in the center, as you can see all from across the campus. It's not just Antonio and uh, myself. We have several colleagues uh, who are very uh, heavily involved in, in the center. And I just want to give a shout out to the, the leadership team of the center and leave you with the thought that we want you involved. We want the faculty, staff, students, and uh, we are in this together, but we think we have a way forward. So let's do it.